Greetings and peace, everyone. I hope you and yours are having a great month of November 2021. In this Masonic education video, I want to take some time to read some Supi poetry to you, Supi mystical poetry in connection with the esoteric spiritual Mason who's trying to smooth out his rough ashlar and become close to God and in his quest for self-mastery. So in, in this interpretation, I will read out the poems for you. And this very nice PDF that I found, it gives you like a short bio of the authors and it will give you the poetry in which then I will give the analysis from my Sufi and Masonic perspective. And I will put the link for the PDF in the description below. All right, so let's hit screen share. <clears throat> Okay. All right. So the first seven pages, as you see, it's like a 50 page PDF. So the first seven pages basically focuses on Rabia al Basri. And I did a totally separate video on her. So you could check that out whenever you get a chance. Though so we'll skip straight to Ahmad Jam, who lived between 1048 and 1141. And we'll check out his poetry. Okay. The Sufi writer and poet Ahmad Jam was born in Iran. He's revered as a saint. In addition to poetry, he also wrote books on theology. So not only was he a saint, he was a scholar writing and teaching on theology. So we'll start with his first poem, Your Beauty. Each who has seen your beauty fine utters honestly, I have seen the divine. Everywhere your lovers wait for grace. Remove your veil, remove, reveal your face. I am in the ocean and an ocean is in me. This is the experience of one, one who can see. He that leaps into the river of unity, he speaks of union with his beloved's beauty. So in, with the Sufi poetry, you have to realize when they refer to their beloved, that is, Almighty God, or what the Mason refers to as, as the grand architect of the universe. And that is the ultimate goal, because you realize that all of creation that's in, in here on this earth right now, it's all a manifestation of that perfect being trying to understand each other through itself. And that's why you have these different scholars like Ibn Arabi and all of these uh, people that only Allah can worship Allah. And, you know, Allah sent himself to himself with Baba Muhayyuddin, Ibn Arabi, all of these great Sufi masters who have taught us that you have to find that divinity within your heart and each other. That's the only way we could have peace on earth and how as Masons also we refer to each other as on the level, no matter what your race or religion, we're all one people and what the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, from the Sufi perspective refers to as the one Ummah. So that's what we see to find the beauty of the beloved. Wherever we see life's existence, in the trees, in the air, we see the birds flying, each other smiles, tears, moments of happiness. It's all relative to the grand scheme of things. And that's the ultimate goal for the Sufi who's trying to let go of this world and become closer to his beloved, the grand architect. And the same, same thing for the Mason who's trying to achieve that same goal and become a master of himself. Second one, wherever I look, whatever I see, I see the beloved's beauty. Wherever I look, I see his creation. Wherever I look, I see goodness. Whatever is beautiful is the beloved's beauty. Every, every form that is beautiful in the world is only assigned to the beloved's beauty. Just like what I explained, that everything around you is a manifestation of that perfect being. Now imagine if people came to that realization that everything in totality is connected to almighty God, then there would be no hate in this world. Like it says in Surah 2, verse 62 of the Holy Quran, whether you're Jewish, Christian, Muslim, as long as you do right, have a good code of conduct and do the right thing, then on the day of judgment, you shall have no grief. In the Gita, it says, Krishna says that whatever path you follow, it all leads to me. And it's all relative. If people could realize those things, then 
there, there will be peace on this earth, but we have to strive for it and fight against bigotry and ignorance, no matter what race, religion, or organization we see it in. If everything is a representation of the divine and we have that realization in our heart and others are able to have that too, then there is no room for hatred anymore. And I believe that's something the Masonic Brotherhood in its true, true esoteric form really shows how everyone is, is, is part of that one truth, that one totality, no matter what race, religion, occupation, or walk of life you come from. That is, that is the truth. Now we go to eight. Of the mercy I am sure, though I am a sinner impure, of thy mercy I am sure. I am maligned and taunted in the street and covered with the dust of sin, broken hearted and discarded and a thorn in the eye of humanity. I am one lost in the way of love and am one whose deeds are poor. Cast thy healing glance on me for thy grace I yearn and of thy mercy I am sure. And this basically implies how the Sufi, no matter what difficulties this life throws at him, and people, sometimes people fear things they do not understand. That includes masonry as well. And how he's basically putting his whole trust in God that have mercy on me and guide me on this path. Just like how masons put their full trust on God and do try to do the right thing for themselves, for their families, for their responsibilities, people that they love, situations that they've been placed in. And it, 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 it's showing you that you have to deal with the difficulties of humanity sometimes, the difficulties and challenges of this world, but you, you cannot let it shake you, not shake your beliefs, not shake your foundations on who you are, what you promise to be, and the path that you have chosen to walk with putting your full trust in the grand architect of the universe. The Sufi does the same, the Mason does the same. You look at the black and white tiles, good times, bad times, bad times, good times. The to totality of order and chaos where one cannot exist without the other. But ultimately you put your faith in that one truth who is the representation of that all. Like it says in the Holy Quran, that we test you with both good and evil and to us, you shall be returned. The memento mori, the aspect of death, and knowing both good and bad come from the creator, like it says in the Bible, that the good Lord giveth and he also taketh away. So you all, you, you got to realize there is a balance because if it was a good time all the time, then we wouldn't learn our lessons. So it's important we keep our faith and take things one day at a time for both Sufi, Masonic, and whatever spiritual path that you walk in this life, all relative. Number nine. Now we go to Sanay Ghaznavi, who lived between 1080 and 1131. He is the first of the great Sufi teachers and Masnavi, writers of the Islamic world, which means like a poet. So his first poem is Invocation. <clears throat> O oh friend, I want your sustenance. O oh beloved, I want to serve and obey. It's my duty to obey and follow you. My life, my soul, I bestow on you. I heard the whisper of your love once. I, I yearn to hear that invocation once again. So this one again, it's basically saying that he wants to serve God. He wants to live a life serving God, the will of God, just like how the Mason does puts his complete trust in God and in all of his aspect of wisdom, self-mastery, and just to hear the aspect of going through that undertaking and know that whenever you're on a path of righteousness and you're smoothing out your rough ashlar, rough ashlar becoming a smooth ashlar and you're becoming close to God and going through those imperfections of life and this the way that this world has been set up, you kind of keep the faith. You keep on keeping on and you keep the faith for the sake of how things are meant to play out in the grand scheme of things. And that's why you serve, you obey, you yearn. And like he says, my life, my soul, I bestow on you. And how the, 
even the Mason puts his full trust and faith in God. And basically, even myself, what I do every morning in my prayers, I say, use me how you see fit in this life. And that's that. Now we go to the night of union. Each night, I pray is a happy night for me because the messenger of my friend is near to me. Everyone loses his light when night comes. For me, my light comes when time for prayer comes. Day of separation gone, the night of union arrives. Oh day, please end, let the light not night remain. Oh friend, so long as you abide, no sorrow can I have. So long as I live, you are my Lord and I a slave. Each moment, friend, when I come in front of you, happiness is allowed and pain and sorrow forbidden. Now, I really like this one because it tells you that you have this aspect of light and dark, day and night, but we think we lose the light when night comes, when in totality, that light is always within us and around us through our friends, through the creator, like the creator manifested in all beings in this world. And we just find that happiness. We always keep smiling through difficulties always keep smiling knowing things work out that the way that they're meant to and how even the mason is taught to keep his faith in god and keep smiling and even in the, the sufi aspect you have imam ali radiyatala anna who says that whatever is meant for you it shall never escape you if it's meant for you to have it so we keep our faith in the things all the things that we're meant to do people that we're meant to see, places that we're meant to go. We take things one day at a time and we enjoy this journey called life. And just like how he says, my light comes when the prayer comes. For the Mason, his light comes when he puts his trust in God and puts basically invokes his own personal indication of how he chooses to connect with the creator, which again shows you how the Masonic esoteric path is the true definition of that true singularity of humanity, where we're all connected, no matter who you are and what you believe. And of course, we keep smiling because happiness is allowed and pain and sorrow forbidden. I, I like that. Love's command. So as long as this world exists, I do not want the pain of love, but I love love and cannot break the vows of break the vows of love but as long as the story of love and lovers adorns this world my name shall be written boldly in the book of love their heart is caught in the snare of the beloved's curls those who ride with beauties in the field of love i will play in this field of love till eternity i have trapped my heart in the curls of love in this world my love is the reason for goodness since he's the reason for goodness I became the goodness of love. So this basically tells you that love is the only reality. Love is the only answer, true love. One without any gain, any motive, any lust, any agenda, malevolent agenda behind it. True love where you can empower each other, empower yourself, connect to yourself, connect to your creator. How even the Mason has brotherly love and charity for himself, for his brothers, for his family, for humanity, and the aspect of being a kind individual filled with love. And you spread that love, you are a conduit of that energy, spreading that love wherever your existence continues to carry you. That's what the Sufi believes in his full faith in the creator, the Mason in his undertaking with the grand architect of the universe, God in its totality to smooth out his ashlar and become and chip away at his imperfections on a daily basis. That's basically it. And we see so much hate in the world. It would not hurt us to try love because what has hate gotten us so far? We're always told about how, how we're supposed to be divided based on physical appearance and skin color and religion and what social class you grew up in. But at the end, everyone wants the same things for their family. They want to have a table full of food. Everything is taken care of. They want to see their families happy, enjoy their achievements in life, enjoy their growth in life. Everyone on all levels desires the same things for their family. 
So why not we come together in love and have that empathy one an, with one another rather than this ethnic um, uh, enclave system that I've seen here, uh, especially in America, where they do describe the aspect of the melting pot, but every community is kind of its own ethnic enclave. And that shouldn't be the case. You should have true love and true unity everywhere. That's when humanity will have some progress. Otherwise, we will continue to suffer. And I hope in my life uh, I can work towards that or play some kind of a role or purpose in bringing that about, not just in this country, but on a worldwide level where caste systems and religions and social classes and races. You look at Mother Earth, if you go to outer space and you look at Mother Earth in her totality, it's one harmonious globe spinning in unity. If, if I had seen that for the first time and I had never been to this planet, I, will, I would see, wow, it's such a harmonious planet. You have the water, beautiful lands, landscapes, mountains, deserts, etc. So from the outside, it looks like one singularity in harmony with each other. But when you come down here, it's mankind that creates the issues. Artificial borders, artificial barriers with each other, when in totality, we're all one species and one family. It's all one land. It used to be one land if you look at art's old, old, oldest history. All one land, all one people, one existence, the totality of, of brotherhood, knowledge, charity. So that's what the Sufi is describing in this world. You have to be a conduit of love if no one else is doing it. Because if you're not going to do it, then who's going to take your place? And in this world full of hate, we need as many of us we can gather to balance out the darkness and the agents of chaos, who, mind you, also exist in all races, religions, and groups in the world. That internal battle between light and dark. Now, as we see here, we move on to Fariduddin Attar, who existed between 1145 and 1221. Now, Fariduddin Attar, one of the greatest mystic poets of Islam, Attar was born and spent most of his life long in Northeast Persia. A pharmacist by profession, Attar lived in turbulent times yet managed to survive and produce an enormous amount of work on a variety of subjects and themes. It is without doubt that his spirituality sustained and inspired all of his writings. Let's start with Fariduddin's first poem. The fire of your love. The fire of your love is best inside the soul and the soul burning with your love is best of all. One who has tasted a drop of your wine today is happy drunk and dazed till judgment. When you came to be, I was hidden. In the beloved's presence, it was best not to be. Give me pain and cure me not of my love, cause your pain is better than any balm. Since none hope to meet you in this life, this hopeless search for you is the best of all. Without you, I am witness to dry autumn. In such an eye, the rain of tears is the best of all. Like a candle in separation from you, it's best that utter weeps all night. <laughs> So he's, he's basically telling you that in this life, you're searching your way back to God, how the Mason is working his way back to the East to find light, knowledge, and to connect with the grand architect of the universe. So too is the Sufi in his quest, in his lifelong quest of searching and walking and traveling the path of the self-discovery, love, existence, purpose, brotherhood, charity, good times, bad times. Like, like it said, even in his era when his biography was described that he grew up in turbulent times, but he made the best of his situation. The Sufi does the same, the Mason does the same. They make the best of what is given to them. And it's just that fire of love that continues to burn inside you and in all of your undertakings. And that there's always a purpose there's no purpose then what is the point of your existence you keep striving one day at a time because it, it's just like when you finish a video game you finish all of the objectives what is there to do after that you move on to the next game same thing with the movie after the credit credits finish right you move on 
So in, in this uh, poetry, it's telling you that if in this life, in this realm that you're in, if you were perfect and you had all the answers to everything, you wouldn't be here. This realm, many call it a realm of suffering. Many call it a simulation. Many call it a spiritual school where you your soul voluntarily comes and tries to raise the frequency of the planet. Every, everyone has their own interpretation, but it is all relative. It's all connected to the grand scheme of things. So what he's saying is that continue with my existence in, in, in this lifelong search of learning every day, of growing every day. That's what the Sufi is doing with Fariduddin Uttar. The Mason also is on a lifelong quest, whether he's a master Mason, a past master, 33, doesn't matter. He's always learning and growing every day in his journey of self-discovery, self-mastery, and smoothing out his imper imperfections, chipping away at his rough ashlar until it becomes smooth to become one with self, his brotherhood, the grand architect, the creator, in all the ways. It's it's a um if you if you watch the movie Never Ending Story, I believe that's the one that that has the great symbolism in there for what the the story relates to all religious, spiritual, and philosophical paths that are out there about the aspect of the never ending love story or never ending journey. Now we go to the pain of love. Whomever received an atom of this pain of love for him both yesterday and tomorrow become today. Everything we see is really one. The months, the years are all just a day. A thousand centuries have passed us by, yet this pain forever haunts us in the same way. Whoever embarks on a search for a friend must burn in this fire and wait. But each day he burns is his day to celebrate. I see only an atom of this pain whose sweet sting has reached the depth of everything. This pain is nothing else than the one that stokes the fire of love. This is the pain of that secret that offers us a reason to live and love. And see, the symbolism that we see here is basically the archway. <coughs> Excuse me. You see the archway and you see the two pillars on each side and that basically the oblong square and this is as basically, if you look at the Islamic prayer rugs, that is the magic carpet because it's shaped like an oblong square, like the shape of the lodge. And in, in many ways, it represents a lot of symbolism. And you pray on, on, on that carpet or on that rug and that elevates your soul in the, in how in, in the Western movies they describe as the magic carpet. Because when you're in a state of prayer, connecting to the creator of the universe, realizing that Everything is, is, is in reality one. What is the past, present, and future? It's all one. What is all of these religions and philosophies? It's all teaching you the same thing. It's all one, right? So that's what the Sufi and Mason realize. Mason on the level, he realizes that everything is equal, is on an equal bounds from the truly spiritual and esoteric perspective. And that's what we do. We find a reason to live and to keep striving forward to build a future of equality where all are equally respected and cherished and have a purpose and are not looked down upon because you if you woke up today you do serve a purpose and you're affecting the world in your own way whether you realize it or not and you, you should cherish that about yourself because in reality like i said we're all a manifestation of that perfect being trying to um, understand itself through itself. And that's a concept if, I hope if, if enough people were able to realize then we could have some peace on this world. God willing in my lifetime, I hope I'm able to see that. So now we see your beauty. Your beauty overshadows the world's allure. It overcomes the desire to exist and the in universe entire. He who has so proud of his intellect and sanity your single glance has brought to naught his vanity. Reflection from your moon-like face reaches the sun, and lo, the sun is brought low by it. O oh, beautiful one, the magicians of Babel were beguiled, though they may be clever and wise, when they saw the magic of your eyes yearning for you and torn apart. Separation has broken others' heart. 
So he's saying that we go through all of this life through our arrogance, looking down on each other and doing what we do in this life through its vanities and illusions, thinking that we're going to take our titles, degrees, awards, having numbers next to our name, all that stuff that we think it makes us better than others or it puts, it puts us on a higher pedestal. But in reality, when you find out everything is God, by God, for God, and totality connected to God, then how does that make you feel when you look down upon others or when you basically are in a state of hatred and division? When in reality, it's all connected to the same source that destroys that illusion, that destroys that mindset, that control. And that's what he's saying, that the true Mason or the true Sufi is the one that realizes his separation from the creator in this physical avatar that we currently occupy in this lifetime. And that it's your job to get reunited with that source through prayers, meditations, living a good, clean life, chipping away at your rough ashlar all one in the same it's all one in the same now we go to you will not mourn you will not mourn the burning or the slaying as that sun is your life sustaining and he who is entangled in being is trapped unheeding as he is unseen so knowledge is revealed to those who are meant for it and then you shall not mourn in your life because all the things that you're meant to do, people that you're meant to see, places that you're meant to go, in all divine timing as we're being divinely guided, it shall all be revealed to you in the times that you're meant to receive those messages. That's the beauty of all of this. O oh, you who have revealed, O oh, you who have revealed my hidden sorrow to the world, who am I that received your fragrance in my soul? I am stricken by sorrow, cast a glance this way, for it's you who know my secret and with my heart you play. O oh, love of mine, in the hope of seeing you I roam, in the valley of separation eternally I made my home. It's you who know the cure of my pain. I reach the limit, give me the balm of your love again. Utter soul is dis disheveled like your dark hair. Bring him together, make him whole, and save his scatter, scattered, weary soul. And then we have a representation of the, the divine names. And as we see that what Fariduddin Attar is describing is basically that oneness that those on the spiritual path that are trying to achieve in your being, in your existence, in your heart, mind, body, and soul. As as in this current age of chaos that we're in, especially the 2020s and you know, probably forward if the way things are going right now, where human connections are just getting more weary as time goes on, people are getting tired of life. They're saying that every day it's the same thing. What is the meaning of all of this? Am I just here to pay bills and die and pay off, spend my whole life paying off this house? And at the end, I don't even really own it. If you don't pay the local um, city or municipality or township taxes, they come and take it in a sheriff's sale. Even if you spent your whole life paying it with back, uh, you know, backbreaking labor. What is the what is the point of all of this? What, what are we really doing here? You don't own nothing. Are you here just here to work and pay bills and die? No, you're here for more than that. And that's what he's saying is that we kind of lost our purpose. We're all, all lost in this rat race. And we see this spiritual change that's taking place in the world right now, where after the age of COVID, people are kind of waking up. And uh, I don't know what they call it. I saw, I seen it um, recently where it was an article that was covered where they're saying people are leaving a lot of these, um, I guess, soul sucking jobs alone and they're finding better ways to make a healthier lifestyle and a healthier way of living. So you see people are just not having it anymore. That's why you see a lot of people just not wanting to do these jobs anymore. It's not, it's not that they're lazy. They're finding other more healthier ways to sustain their life because you only get that one life in this current human form. Yes, the soul is immortal, but 
make the best of your human life. That's what the Sufi knows, as Fariduddin Uttar describes. That's what the Mason teaches you. Memento Mori, make the best of your life, knowing it will come to an end. And realizing the facts around you, okay, I'm going to spend 30 years paying this place off. I still don't own it. They could take it away anytime, right? Through whatever means that they can. And why not enjoy your life? Why not have a healthier balance in your life where you're giving equal time to your health, your mental sanity, your emotional health, mental well being, your physical health? Spend time with your extracurricular activities and groups, have hobbies, and still have, make an honest living to be able to get by. I think that's, that's a better balance. And that's what. Fariduddin is teaching us that people are getting more spiritually aware now. And that's basically that perfect being acting through its manifestation. When the time comes, everything kind of aligns in its divine purpose for the Mason and the Sufi. And that separation becomes whole again as we work towards that singularity. Let's go to what madness is this? What madness has seized me because of you? What is this tumult in my soul that you have instilled? Because of you, I am in a state of disarray. It's not my norm to behave this way. I came pure and chaste from the two worlds, purified by the fire of your love divine. That fire you have lit in my soul shall be my guide, eternal and sublime. Where is the eye that can see you? The beloved is there, but the eyes are blind. We are lost in our own veil, while everywhere your vision prevails. So this is uh, basically telling you like the aspect of the, the grand architect of the universe, that his vision always watches humanity. And we have kind of been in, in a state of disarray. We've been kind of disconnected from that source. We believe in our actions that we get away with everything in life, but you really don't. You really don't because as you see the eye of the creator, as you see on top of the square and the compass, there you go, you probably see it now, that the eye of the creator is always observant of your actions. In Islam or in the Sufi perspective, they have the 99 names of Allah. One of those names is Al-Basir, Al-Basir's or that eye of the creator or the grand architect, all one and the same, is watching you always. And we need the eye and the observance and the blessings of God to be our guide in this life so we can be sublime, right? Like the sublime master mason and be the guide to be one with the beloved, to receive the love and blessings of the beloved as we walk this path of self-improvement, self-mastery, connecting with the creator, being charitable, leaving a better world behind. That's, that's what it is. It's nothing more than that. And we all have a duty that if we have lost this connection, like he's describing that it's what madness is this, that humanity has kind of fell into its lower state. And we don't realize that the eye of the creator is always observing us and we think we're getting away with everything. No, what goes around comes around. What you put in, that's what you get out. Whether it's good or bad, you do good, good will come to you. And I've seen those that hurt others, they cheated others, they betrayed others, and they thought they got away with it, but things don't work like that. Because the all-seeing eye does watch and does hold you accountable in this existence and the one after this. So we must not waste our time thinking that our thoughts, if you have any malevolent thoughts, remove them in your heart, mind, body, and soul. Think good, no good, do good. That is the true Mason and the true Sufi. And that's what Fariduddin Uttar describes to us. Mystic silence. From each, love demands a mystic silence. What do all seek so earnestly? Tis love. Love is the subject of their inmost thoughts. In love, no longer thou and I exist, for self has passed away in the beloved. Nor will I draw aside the veil from love. And in the temple of mine inmost love, behold the friend, incomparable love. 
he who would know the secret of both worlds will find that the secret of them both is love. Now you look at this Sufi Islamic callig calligraphy structure, for some it might seem like an eye and it has like the divine names around it. But when I look at it, it looks for me, it looks like the Masonic point within the circle that the eye or the what we know as Allah or the grand architect of the universe, Sufi Masonic, that it's in the middle and all existence surrounding on this planet, races, religions, philosophies, spiritual paths. It's all a tapestry of different colors and patterns, all going back to that one source, which is to be celebrated, not condemned or divided or looked down upon. Because each path, if you really look at it, it's basically a code of conduct. It's telling you how to live a good, clean life. And it's up to us to basically find that uh, intuition within our hearts, minds, body, and souls to do the right thing with the time that we've been given in this life. Because in reality, love is the only truth. Love is the only totality and truth. Even if you watch the Matrix movies, what is the implied message that always helps Neo overcome the darkness? Love. True love is always the answer. That's what the Sufi strives for with his love for the Almighty. The Mason connects to the Almighty, puts his full trust in the Almighty in all of his undertakings, good, good times, bad times, bad times, good times, black and white tiles, tries to become a better human being in person every day and tries to do right always by following his heart and doing right by those that love him and those that he loves. And that's reality. The only truth that there is is love, nothing else. Everything else is an illusion. And we have to get out of that illusion, especially in the, the times that we're in right now. We need to get back to love. All right, so now we're on, <clears throat> since I received your gift, since I received your gift of love, my task has become difficult, my love. Water pours out of our eyes. There is a fire in our hearts, my love. Since eternity before creation, my soul is lost in your fascination. Not just the soul is entranced by you. The heart too stands in the line to wait on you. Followers of the path are certain of your love and your destination is your abode, my love. I arrive empty and seek your grace. Reason here has no place in this place. Let no one ask why and what this is. This is a mystery that no answer gives. Uther's heart is lost in you. He's like a wounded bird for you. And that's basically him expressing his love for the creator that you strive to receive the grace and blessings of the creator in your life. And again, Love being the only true answer, everything else is an illusion for both the Mason and the Sufi. And the path of love. The path of love is without end. If you value life, then stay away. If you give your life, then learn. A thousand are given in return. He who shies away and saves his life shall, shall be forever, forever regretful of his fate. Love of the beloved enters my heart, announces that tonight is the night. If your heart is annihilated for your beloved, then peace is being restless and distraught. Your first step in the field of love is to be slain or reach the cross, and then you will be burnt so you can see that the light of love shines in the fire's heart. And when you become ashes and dust, then you will, then you will dance reflected by the sun. That is, I like that. That basically tells you that in this life, if you shy away from challenges, like he says, that if you try to save your life, you most likely will live in regret. And you have to live your life trusting God, taking risks, doing the right thing in the path of love, not backing away from any challenges or when the going gets rough, you run away. So in the, this is relative to the Sufi and Masonic path that in, you're not only there for the good times to enjoy it, but in the bad times, you're there 
to, you know, basically continue your journey towards the beloved and to do what is right in the aspect of love, brotherhood, charity, unity. And you must keep going no matter what happens. Because it's like what he says, one day we do have to go from here. And when you become ashes and dust, then, you're, you, then you will dance reflected by the sun. So the sun will continue to shine upon you wherever your resting is and will continue and your, your light will continue to be an, a, a conduit of the creator's love because of the path you chose to walk and not shying away from difficulties or challenges by placing your full trust by walking the path of the creator in your undertakings, both Sufi and Masonic, relative to both. Beautiful. 21, in love. In love, young and old are the same. In love, loss and gain are the same. In love, the worlds are the same. In love, autumn and spring are the same. It's down is up and up is down. The earth and heavens are the same. The place of love is a circle. Each spot is equal to the other. If the beloved scorns you or welcomes you, it's all the same. And the tradition of love to die is the same as gaining eternal life. Now, that this is a very deep one because he's telling you that in reality, we are all just part of that one being. No one is separate. Who am I and who are you? That's the reality. But in, in totality, we're just connected, let's say, part of this one being. And we're just uh, like two puppets, like Mr. Rogers, talking to each other. But in reality, we're all connected and a conduit of that one being experiencing itself through itself in this reality like what Ibn Arabi uh, says that, uh, you know, Ibn Arabi and Baba Muhayyuddin collectively in their deeper esoteric teachings that Allah sends himself to himself and the aspect of us understanding itself through itself. It's a concept that only a few can realize. And it's just exactly what it's telling you that when somebody is scorning you or telling you something or showing you love, or um, basically whatever it is, <laughs> whether it's good or bad, it's all love. It's all part of that one being. Good love, tough love, heavens and the earth, up and down. It's all the same. It's like what the Sufi says, Allah is the only reality. Everything else is an illusion. When someone dies, we say, that to Allah we belong and to him we shall return that there, everything else is an illusion. You're just here to go back to that source that you belong to. And the, the Masonic aspect is the same, that you put your full trust in the grand architect of the universe. And then you, you have to return to that source, the celestial grand lodge. That's exactly it. It's all love, up, down, left, right, all one and the same religions, philosophies, the way people teach, the way that they learn, the way that they scold each other. It's all that one being and it's all love. That's what it's telling you. You know, the twinkle in your eyes, the anger in your voice, the tears. It's all part of that one being. Let us love each other and have empathy and have understanding for each other. And again, look at the symbolism that comes. What looks like an eye or the point within the circle and all existence and all of its totality connecting to that one source. That's it. There's nothing else to it. I pray, you know, with all the craziness that I see in the world, people come to realize that. But, you know, we're, I guess we're all in this together for however long we're meant to. So let us cherish it and honor it while we can. In the dead of night, in the dead of night, a Sufi began to weep. He said, the world is like a closed coffin in which we are shut. And in, in which through our ignorance, we spend our lives in folly and desolation. When death comes to open the lid of the coffin, each one who has wings will fly off to eternity. But those without will remain locked in the coffin. So my friends, before the lid of, the, of this coffin is taken off, do all you can to become a bird of the way, way to God. Do all you can to develop your wings and your feathers. So what he's saying is the inevitable reality that will hit us, all, all of us soon, whether you're rich, 
you have degrees, titles, accolades, pros and pearls, all that good stuff that one day you have to leave from this world. And it's the, in the Masonic perspective is the memento mori, make the best of this life while you have it and get close to God and smooth out your imperfections. So like it says, you can have wings to fly to the creator. Otherwise you continue uh, in this aspect of samsara, what Buddha describes until you get it right. And in the Sufi perspective, there's a story that during the five daily prayers of Islam, you have the angel of death that visits you on each five occasions. And he asks God, can I take him now? Can I take him now? And each time God will say, no, only when I tell you to take him, you take him. And one time there was a rich businessman. And, and what happened was he had all of this fame, riches, fortune, women, cars, homes, you name it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Whatever the aspect of the average man desired, he had it times 10. So the angel of death came to collect him and it was, it was his time to go. You can't fight against that when it, when it comes time to go. And then the man said, what about my wife, my kids, uh, my home, my fortunes, my riches, my titles, my accolades? And he said, um, no, I'm sorry, you can't take none of that with you. And the man said, then what did I do all of this for in my life? What can I take with me? And the angel of death said, the real spiritual wealth that you can carry with you to the next side is what good did you do for yourself and others? That is what helps you get the wings to go to the other side, what Fariduddin Uttar is describing. And the man's tears started streaming down in his face and he realized, you know, I, I cheated. The people that believed in me, I cheated on them. Uh, I cheated on my, you know, business partners. I threw people under the bus. I got over on people. I spent my whole life building this lie in the end to lose it all. And I realized that the only wealth was what good did you do for yourself and others for this existence and the next. And that's the reality. For the Mason, make the best of your human life and do good for yourself and others. One day, memento mori, you do have to face that reality. Same thing. So you have to make the best of your human life while you have it. That is the reality my friends and brothers and sisters. And I believe I will end it here. I think this is good enough because I don't want it to be too long as well. I want it to just be a good enough length where I covered the gist of Sufi mystical poetry. And I hope you liked it. I hope you were able to uh, take something away from it. This is the PDF. Sufi mystical poetry. I'll put a link for it in the description below. And I thank whoever has compiled this PDF. It didn't have any uh, individual's name who I could give them credit to. It was a free resource available on the internet for use for public commons for the purpose of nonprofit and activism, which is what my channel and videos are about and labeled under. So I thank who, whoever it was, whether it was an individual or a group of people who compiled and put this knowledge out there for free in the same manner that I do. All of my videos, everything that I put out there, all for free. And it's all for the purpose of continued knowledge and love and guidance for humanity, for both my Sufi, Masonic, and all brothers of all paths, brothers and sisters of all paths. We're all here walking each other home and we owe this love and light to one another. I hope you were able to get something positive out of this, out of this message, and I hope that things go good with November and going into December. We have a new year ahead of us, and I hope that this new year for us brings peace, happiness, prosperity, and all the goodness that we're meant to do in this life and the next. Just like, you know, with the Sufi what the Sufi does in his life, he, he continues his existence. He tries his best. He does what he does. And that's the life. That's the life. Make the best of it. My love to all of you. Do right by others while you still have the time to do it. That's all I can say. That's because that's the only, only reality.
Much love to all of you and thank you.